It was both dream and reality. If we're talking about a true culprit, that could only be that thing inside the primordial sea, right? The truth, the original sin, the trial, and the root cause of the disaster. So we've met it at last. I understand very well why it has chosen to make an appearance here. That whale does not belong to Tevat. It is a monster that has traversed the stars, weeping all the while. It has been greedily consuming the energy from the planet's primordial sea, using it to grow. That is the main cause for the rising sea levels. And once it has finished consuming all of the energy contained within the sea, its next step will be... You said that when the Hydro Archon first created Fontanians out of Oceanids, she filled their blood vessels with primordial seawater. Precisely. That whale finds the blood of Fontanians nigh impossible to resist. Therefore, when it left the primordial sea, it decided to make its next stop a packed opera house full of food. Food in the form of Fontanians. We just barely managed to push it back, right? In that case, won't it come back to target the people again once it's managed to recover its strength? That is correct. Indeed, it is more accurate to say that we should thank that Harbinger for buying us some time. Without him, the whale would have likely come onto land far sooner. From the way he looked, he must have been fighting the creature for quite a long time. That battle maniac! We've always known that he had a special connection with that whale, but we definitely didn't expect it to help us out like this! Anyway, now that we know that this whale is the actual cause of the disaster recorded in the prophecy, all we need to do to stop the prophecy would be to find a way to beat it up, right? It is too late. It had already absorbed too much of the Primordial Sea's energy before we could notice it. At this point, it has become practically integrated with the sea itself. Even if the entirety of Tevat were to be destroyed, it could still survive and swim off towards some other world. That... that's not something I will accept. We've already done everything we can, and we even found the true culprit. We've come so far. You can't just tell me that the last hurdle is some impossible foe. That's just not fair. Indeed, that's not how a grand performance should end. I'll fight it to the end, no matter what. So the prophecy will be fulfilled no matter what, huh? The 
the prophecy. Yes, what has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the gods' gaze does not fall? Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. I believe it is preparing to carry out the death sentence. <laughs> Sorry, that shocked expression on your face is just too amusing. I couldn't help myself. You are not Farina. Who are you? Ah, the sweet sound of bewilderment. Marvelous. A sure sign that my attempt to deceive everyone was a resounding success. But to answer your question, I am Fosalor. You know, the god. Fosalor, why did you deceive us? Oh, that wasn't my goal, of course. Goodness, no. But I had to fool everyone else, too, if I was to stand any chance of deceiving. The Heavenly Principles. Deceiving the Heavenly Principles? It's all because of that pernicious prophecy. Dreadful, wasn't it? Everyone doomed to dissolve. Fontaine condemned to be flooded. One was not amused. In fact, one was positively bemused when that problem was thrust upon me by my dearest predecessor. That's the former Hydro Archon Egeria for the uninitiated. It hardly gets more disastrous than a preordained national catastrophe, now does it? She knew full well that the prophecy would surely come to pass. And as one of the seven, she also knew full well that one defies the heavenly principles at one's peril. So yes, as you have no doubt surmised, it was a rather impossible situation that I found myself in. I spent a terribly long time mulling it over, alone on the ocean floor. And I was almost growing barnacles by the time I finally realized there was only one possible solution to this confounding conundrum. I had to outwit the heavenly principles 
allow the prophecy to be fulfilled, ostensibly at least, while saving everyone at the same time. <laughs> I'm a genius, I know. I can only assume that's why Egeria chose me as her successor. Although, looking back now, it was hardly the inheritance one dreams of. Between the task of saving the nation, the quotidian duties of the Hydro Archon, and not to mention the original sin of creating a new race of humans, I dare say she left me quite a colossal mess to clean up. <sighs> but one can only play the hand one is dealt. I did not choose this any more than I chose to be one of her Oceanid familiars. So you were also once one of the Oceanids, transformed into a human by Egeria's hand? Yes, I was. I always dreamed of becoming human. And I still do, even now. In my eyes, to be human is to be part of the greatest opera ever known. After becoming a god, I separated my divinity from my body and spirit, leaving behind only a self that was as naive and bewildered as my past self on her first day as a human being. The me you see before you now is that divinity. And the human counterpart I left behind, I named Farina. She could feel joy, sorrow, and everything in between. She could be as vain and conceited, or as meek and vulnerable as she wished. Her strengths were of a kind only a human could possess, as were her shortcomings. But in my eyes, Farina's humanity was what made her perfect. She was perfectly human in every way. The person I always wanted to be. Anyway, so then I cursed her. All part of the plan, of course. The plan to deceive the heavenly principles. <sighs> Do you still remember the final scene of the prophecy? The Hydra Archon, alone, weeping on her throne. In order that the prophecy might appear fulfilled, I invited Farina to be an actress, to play the part of the Hydro Archon in the prophecy. Under the curse I placed on her, so long as I, Fosalor's divinity, continued to exist, she could not die. But nor was she free to live her life in the pursuit of happiness. Instead, she was forced to take the stage in the Opera House, to embrace the role of leading lady, to forever play the part of the god from the prophecy, all to create a deceitful appearance of that prophecy coming to pass. I suppose now you probably understand why your court is called the Opera Epicles. But Farina is only human, isn't she? Even though she has had a long life, her mind is no stronger than that of any other ordinary human being. I cannot begin to fathom what she has had to endure. It must have been torture for her. It has indeed. And although she is, in a sense, me in human form, I most definitely owe her an apology for it. It's been five hundred years, and all along, she's been playing her part in the most unimaginably long, unbearably lonely, and agonizingly painful opera of all time.
Who permitted you to come onto the stage? Now, I understand your admiration for my august self, but I must ask you to keep to the rules. All right, all right. It is not my intent to reprimand you. There is no need to state your name. Just be off with you. Do not distract me from my performance. <laughs> oh, do not jest. Can you not feel it? I am Fosalor. The eyes of countless Fontanians are upon me. I must, at all times, display the utmost elegance and nobility. Dear audience, the performance is experiencing a technical difficulty, but worry not. The guards shall resolve it soon enough. Yeah, a bitter pill to swallow. Wake up! Think you can get away? Here we go. Yeah. Seems like an emergency. Hey, what gives? The audience is still watching me, you know. Guards? Wait, where are the guards? Guards! Time for takeoff. Yeah. Ah. Let's play. Bow your head. Farina, Farina. Huh? Who's that? Who's calling me? Where are you? Be not nervous. Be not afraid. I am before you. Wait a moment. You're near me? How can this be? Hmm. <laughs> Mirror you, huh? You know what? That's not bad. Let's go with that. Mirror me. What do you wish to say? The prophecy. Have you heard of it? What prophecy? Oh, wait. I know. I think. I don't know why, but it's in my head somehow. The people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain. Weeping on her throne. 
Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Oh, <laughs> very good. You know it well. What's going on? I can't seem to remember anything clearly. The only thing I know for sure is this prophecy. Will it really come to pass? <laughs> yes, it will. And that is why I've come to you. Disaster will come to Fontaine sooner or later. Things will develop just as the prophecy declared. There is no escaping it. But doesn't that mean everyone will die? I'm a Fontanian just like them. Will I dissolve too? <laughs> oh, don't worry. Magical meetings exist in this world precisely to give people a chance to turn things around. It is the reason why you met me today. I will tell you how to save everyone, but you may have to suffer somewhat. Oh, oh, so there's still hope after all. Goodness, you frightened me. You spoke so much and with so much certainty. As for the suffering, well, I will admit that the first thing that came to mind was, why do I have to be the one to suffer? But if the prophecy will come true, I'll also die anyway, right? So if I've already met you as my magical meeting in this world, if there were scales with all the people of Fontaine on one side and my pain on the other, is it not obvious where the scales should tilt? <laughs> You truly are the perfect human. My ideal. I suppose this would also be the justice that belongs to you. Huh? Don't worry, it's nothing. Listen well. Fontaine has just lost its Hydro Archon. I need you to play a role. That of the new Archon. Play as... a god? That's right. You must begin a never-ending masquerade. You must never let anyone suspect your identity. If you can keep it up, then I shall have my way of defying this prophecy. But should your identity be revealed, then all hope will be lost. But how will I do this? A human assuming the role of a god without being exposed. Don't worry. What you must do is not to turn yourself into a real god. You simply need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Being a human yourself, I'm sure you already know what such an entity would be like. Remember... Your true challenge will not be pursuing divinity, but contending against humanity. Um, I'm still not sure I understand, but I'll try. I'll try to do this. So, how long am I going to have to play this role? To accomplish this mission, you will have to stay on the stage for many, many years. You will endure and not grow old until your task ends. But I promise you, all will eventually end in a magnificent and dramatic trial, and everyone will be saved. A trial? Huh. How exciting. I'll be looking forward to it.
The Maison Cardinalise has announced my accession, but this is my first time facing the people. What should I say to most appear like a god? To be honest, I still don't know. Perhaps I should first try to act natural. Ahem! Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the Opera Epicles. I'm sure you've all heard about how I have taken on the role of Hydro Archon. Indeed, I am Verena de Fontaine, your new Archon. In truth, I know little about becoming a nation's new god, but it will be my honor to guide you all. As the god Fosalor, the god of justice, I shall do all within my power to lead you into an age of fairness and justice. Once again, thank you all for coming. If you should have any questions or suggestions, please send them to the Maison Cardinalise. The future of Fontaine will require us to work together, after all. This should do it. I thought I might stammer, but thankfully, I was able to convey my thoughts just fine. Okay, and next. That's the new Hydro Archon. Is this some kind of joke by the Maison? I would have thought that a being that surpasses humanity would be a bit more... assertive. <laughs> hey, did you hear that? She even told us to send her suggestions there at the end. Shouldn't gods be all-powerful? She's being so... modest. What's the difference between her and an ordinary person, then? Uh, if you ask me, perhaps the succession didn't actually happen. She might just be a maison back puppet. Wait, what's going on? Why is everyone suspecting me of being a fake? Oh, this is bad. If I get exposed here, there'll be no saving the people from the prophecy. Right. Mir me said that I just need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Calm down, Farina. Think. Think. What do the people want? How would they imagine a god to speak and act? Assertive, with a strong sense of presence. One who can dispel all doubt. That is the character I'm fated to play. <sighs> <laughs> oh, very good, my people. Only ones such as you are deserving of my rule. Now, I was wondering if some weak puppet were to one day come onto the stage and claim ownership of this opera house, would the children of Fontaine follow them? <laughs> well, it seems that you would all see right through them. Having passed my test, you are qualified to witness wondrous trials alongside my august self here in this opera house. You may consider my previous act a door gift of sorts. I thought it was a debut that suited the atmosphere. Now then, let us be reintroduced. Ah, so that was just a performance. How could I have forgotten that we were inside an opera house? Her personality? It's quite shocking, to be honest, but I suppose it's a better look than before. Such a fascinating and bold deity! How wonderful! Our future may yet be bright after all. It seems I've turned them around. Best follow this flow and restart my accession speech. My dear people, whether you acknowledge me or not, whether you trust me or nay, I say to you, keep faith in your ardor for justice. We have heard it said that this nation's sins can no longer be washed away. Well, I say that justice is most fragrant when it blooms amid sin. The scales of justice should not weigh heavy in the hands of its god. On one side, it must carry fairness and justice. <laughs> and on the other, praise and applause. <laughs> May law be the prayer on our lips, 
May judgment be our worship. Let us light the fires and drink to the future of Fontaine. There is no trouble in this world that justice cannot solve. All that is needed is for you, my people, to believe in it, heart and soul. So long as I, the Archon Fosalor, stand within the Opera Epicles, so long as I stand before the Oratrice, I shall even judge the gods of this world! Lady Farina, here are today's case reports, as well as a summary of the follow-up for your perusal. <sighs> Come now, was I not just at the Opera House in person? Leave these kinds of things to Nervillette. Besides, none of these trials were the one that I'm looking forward to the most. Um, if I may be so impertinent, what kind of trial are you truly looking forward to? A magnificent, dramatic, and wondrous trial. A trial to end all things. <sighs> How could you hope to understand? That's true. I fear I lack the ability to grasp your divine thought, Lady Archon. No need for fright. And do not take what I said before too seriously. <laughs> Go now. Do your duties. The trial I await. It will come one day. Lady Farina, uh, I don't know what to say. Thank you for agreeing to see me. No need to thank me. Rather, thank your own sense of perseverance instead. Long have you stood in line to meet me, have you not? <laughs> oh, I'm afraid that's just an inevitable consequence of my divine charm. <laughs> All right, Deuteria, is it? How is your son's illness? Uh, y you remembered me, and you knew of my family, too. Uh, he is doing much better now. In fact, he is far more of an ardent believer than I. He was the one who forced me to seek an audience with you, and to bring your words back to him. <laughs> oh, good. Very good. If this should happen again in the future, please do not hesitate to come and tell me. Going down to citizens' homes every so often, while not usual practice, should serve as a fine change of pace. Oh, you're such a gentle and wise god. Thank you once again, on behalf of my son. Uh, Lady Farina, here are the latest hydrological reports. As for the specific parameters you asked to take note of, I'm afraid things still don't look good. I see. It's as I thought, then. As your god, I did already expect this, but I wanted to see how far your human wisdom would allow you to analyze it. All manner of signs indicate that the prophecy will still come to pass. Forget it. That's not something you need to worry about right now. Uh, well, as I understand it, the Fontaine Research Institute is also trying to find a way to counter the rising water levels. Really? Have they found anything? I'm afraid that they haven't found any effective solution thus far. <clears throat> oh, is that so? 
So, no wonder. This issue has reached the realm of the gods after all. Still, their spirit is praiseworthy. The day is finally over. I haven't had a moment to breathe this whole time. But it's good to see that everything's getting on track. There are no longer any voices of suspicion. Maybe this is fine. I just need to keep going, and everyone will be saved. <sighs> Alright, Farina, don't think too hard about this. You need rest. Tomorrow's a new day. Lady Farina, here are the new trial reports for the latest cases, as well as a summary of the follow-up. Uh, there'll be no need for that. I've seen them already. There's no need to go back over scenes I've witnessed in person before! Lady Farina, I I've waited so, so long for this chance to see you in this manner. Indeed, my dear loyal citizen. This joyous moment is an honor for us both. Lady Farina, we're detecting significant hydrological anomalies near Poisson. Understood. Keep monitoring. Keep me informed should anything come up at the Institute. <sighs> I don't think I let anything slip today. I must show the people that there is nothing to worry about. I just... don't know when these days will end. I feel utterly exhausted. Best to rest early today, too. Lady Farina, it's... Oh, it's like a dream being able to speak with you up close like this. I've heard that the first member of our family who was honored to receive an audience with you was Madame Deuteria almost 20 generations ago. <laughs> and what a fine family yours is indeed. It brings me great joy to meet such a faithful believer. A descendant of a line most ardent. <laughs> <laughs> Surely you exaggerate, Lady Farina. Uh, um, my lady? Hmm? What is it, good citizen? Oh, are... are you crying? Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> really now? I didn't even notice. This must be the overflow of Hydro from my person. Well... I can't quite help being the god whose dominion is the waters, can I? Uh, no wonder. No wonder. A manifestation of your power, then. Oh, Archon, I am honored to have witnessed it. Honored indeed. <laughs> so interminable. <laughs> So lonely. Just how much longer? Hundreds of years must have passed by now. Perhaps the show must go on for hundreds more. I never imagined that it would hurt so much. <laughs> have I reached my limit? <laughs> no. Perhaps I reached it long ago. Today I didn't even notice my own tears. 
I want to tell someone, anyone about this. But would that not destroy all I've done so far? I've conducted so many investigations across the centuries, but there's not even a sliver of hope that we might break the prophecy. All I can do is keep heart. I must maintain this act, and it's the only way to save Fontaine. Please, mirror me. You have to succeed. Farina, you don't have to shoulder this burden alone. Although I don't know what you might be keeping from everyone, your people are more than willing to share your burden with you. Share my burden. That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. But even if your burden doesn't need to be shared, you can still choose to confide in someone. Just share it with me. I'm what you'd call a witness. A witness? Huh. Yes. I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? <sighs> if that's the case... She's right. I could confide in her, couldn't I? But if things don't play out as expected, the people of Fontaine will be the ones to pay the price. No, Farina. You shouldn't be selfish. <sighs> but what if... What if it's really alright? Farina, you've worked so hard for so, so long. Surely it would be okay to put yourself first for once. Just this once. Is it such an outrageous thing to do anyway? To find someone in whom you can confide your frustrations and sorrows. Surely, it could not hurt. If you let this opportunity slip through your fingers, it might never come by again. Think about it. Long and hard. No, I have nothing to say. I am Farina, the Archon of Fontaine. Everything will surely get better. All you need to do, dear spectator, is to witness my performance until the curtains fall. <sighs> Fine. So even Farina doesn't know the truth? You've never once let her in on the full plan? Yes, it had to be done. To deceive the heavenly principles, you must first deceive yourself. She did very well. If she had let her resolve falter even once in these five centuries, Fontaine would have been doomed to the most tragic fate. It seems that trusting humanity was the right decision after all. I believe that I understand how your deception works, but that is only half the truth, is it not? How would you build on this foundation to save the people of Fontaine? That is the most important thing. Ah, good, good. 
Of course, the Udex of Fontaine has pinpointed the crux of the issue. I'm sure you've long sensed that the Oratrice is no simple machine, yes? I've always suspected that it had its own consciousness. And Linny did mention that he heard a human voice within the core chamber. It now seems that that person was you, hidden within the machine all along. Am I right? And then I became one with the Oratrice, taking Fontaine's Gnosis with me. Yes, it would seem so, wouldn't it? Alas, your understanding of this device still lacks sufficient depth. In truth, it is no enactor of justice. It is, in fact, a device created to kill the God of Justice. I beg your pardon? Oh, you have it. And to be more precise, not only will the Oratrice take down the God of Justice, it will also take down the Divine Throne upon which she has been placed. <laughs> I mean, did you think I would be the sort to enjoy peaceful repose while Farina suffered? My work over these last 500 years has been to constantly accumulate indemnidium within the oratrice. But really, some have already discovered that only a small fraction of the energy generated by the device was ever used to provide power to Fontaine. The vast majority has been, had to be, accumulated to enact this death sentence. It was all a part of your plan then, both the trial and the sentence. Indeed. This power, accrued over five centuries, could have sustained Fontanians for millennia had it only been used for that purpose. Almost all of it has now been stored within the Oratrice. But only power of this magnitude could hope to destroy the Hydro Archon's Divine Throne, shaking the rules established by Celestia and breaking through the institution that is the Seven. So the Oratrice's call for death was for neither Farina nor Fosalor, but for the Hydro Archon. The destruction of that Divine Throne if I do not misunderstand your intent, you must be... Returning what's rightfully yours to you, of course. In other words, this was all done to return the authority of the Hydro Archon to the Hydro Dragon of this planet. <sighs> but... Oh, what? Getting sad again, are we? The authority of the ancient dragons shall soon be yours once more, O oh Hydro Dragon Sovereign. And this is the face you make. <laughs> All you've done throughout the years is just so you can sacrifice yourself at the very end. I've never quite seen it that way, you know. Even now, I'm quite pleased at how well my deception worked. <laughs> Hydro Dragon, Hydro Dragon, don't cry. I must say, had it been within my rights, I would have loved to judge the heavenly principles themselves. Were they not guilty of essentially the same crime? Egeria stole the power of the Primordial Sea, and the Heavenly Principle stole the power you ancient dragons possessed. I, for my part, am the God of Justice, and is it not just that your original powers should be returned to you? Speaking of justice, I have always believed that justice lies in the process of pursuing human existence itself. So, if the theft of the Primordial Sea's might was Fontaine's original sin, then, leaving matters of procedural right and wrong aside, the descent of the Fontanians as humans and their right to exist in this world would be Fontaine's original justice. In other words, Existence was Egeria's justice, and to me, 
Justice is the continuation of that existence, defying the prophecy and ensuring that Fontaine's people shall live on. That should be the justice enthroned over all others. At this point, we, whether it be myself or all other Fontanians, have shouldered the burden of this sin for far too long. Eudex Nervillet, the highest judge in our land, when you regain your full power as an elemental sovereign, what verdict shall you pass upon us? So when I was invited to the court of Fontaine to serve as Eudex, I see now that that was your idea too. At last, I now understand the true purpose behind this position. In the beginning, I was uninterested in human existence. But these five centuries of living alongside them have gradually brought about mutual understanding between us. And I have even attempted to feel as they feel. You are a devious one, Fosalor. Things being as they are, surely you know that I could never declare them to be guilty. <sighs> the hour of my execution is almost here. For the sinner, the curtain call has come. I know I may not sound it, but, faced with death, I find myself a little afraid. Perhaps this is one thing both gods and humans have in common. <laughs> Farewell, Nervalette. I hope you've enjoyed the part you played these 500 years. Nivellet, hereby declare, people of Fontaine, your sins are forgiven. What just happened? Has the death sentence been carried out? 
Was that bright light some sort of misdirection? I have a feeling that something huge just happened. <sighs> but since we're all still alive and haven't been dissolved, I assume whatever happened was good for us. It's time to end this. We must meet our punishment to that beast. But, didn't you say just a moment ago that it can't be defeated? I have gained the strength sufficient to deal with it. Through certain means, I now have the ability to separate the power of the Primordial Sea from that creature. We should seize the opportunity to pursue our quarry. Traveler, now that the oratories can no longer function, I require an executor to help me mete out justice. The root of the calamities befalling Fontaine, the beast that enacts the prophecy. Its name is the All-Devouring Narwhal. Come with me, Traveler. The hour of execution has come. to attack it from within. I shall share a part of the ancient dragon's power with you. We shall look for an opening together. I can feel its sorrow turning into hostility. Resist its instinct to devour. Continue to trigger its hostility, and the chance will present itself.
Thanks for helping with the cleanup. It should have been my job, but... Oh well. It was just supposed to be a short private training session for me. I didn't think that my disciple and my master's pet would start brawling in the meantime. Well, actually, I had a feeling that it would happen at some point, but they bumped into one another earlier than I thought. What a blunder. I suppose I'll have to swing my sword three million times as penance. That power... Who are you exactly? Uh, Paimon has an idea. From what she said earlier, she must be Child's Master. Skirk, right? It's just that he gave us the impression that she was the... Uh, less... talkative person. I simply did not have anything to say to the weak. But you, on the other hand, managed to defeat the all-devouring Narwhal without using power from beyond this world. So you may speak to me as equals. I have to agree. It's a strange use of a planet's primordial waters just to raise an all-devouring Narwhal. That kind of power is wasted on it. It's not cooperative. It eats too much. And I have more important things to do with my time than pet sitting. The only thing that creature has going for it is its looks. All in all, it fails as a pet. I... Uh, Miss Skirk? I think you might have missed the point. The point being? Well, being that this pet almost destroyed an entire nation. So what sort of person is your master? Well, child's master's master. Wait, is that right? Oh, right. So you don't know him. Sorry, I assumed you did. His name is Sertologi. I am unfamiliar with that name. Huh. So Master is insufficiently famous. Hmm. How should I describe him then? Have you heard of the name The Fowl? The Fowl? Still nothing? Well, how about the Visionary? Vetterfulnir then? Or Gold Rhine Daughter? Circle. She's Albedo's mom, right? Oh, so you do know that name. To be honest, I also heard all of those names and titles from my master. I don't actually know them either. But I suppose you understand now, yes? My master is likely a similar sort to Rhyndaughter. They are both pursuing some form of perfection. Wait! Didn't you also mention a visionary person? Hyman didn't quite catch their name. Actually, never mind that. I believe it expedient to inform you that the all-devouring Narwhal used up nearly all its strength fighting you. Such roiling hydro energies will prove difficult for the planet's deep seas to digest. As such, the Fontaine back on the surface has most likely been thrown into chaos. In other words, the prophecy that you've been fretting over should now be in full swing. Not to worry. Fosalor has already managed to deceive the Heavenly Principles.
In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only Farina will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Emergency rescue! The Sweetie de Rasula attacks post-disaster rebuilding. I recently visited Poisson to meet with Miss Navia, spokesperson of the Sweetie de Rasula, and we spoke about Poisson's present and future. Old soil can still give birth to new bloom, Miss Navia stated. Hope is like seeing a small cookie when you're starving late at night. You just need a little of it. Skyship Winglet, Lunar Brain of the Fontaine Research Institute. The various disputes that have arisen on account of Mr. Edwin have suddenly become a shield over the Institute, with Julia turning out to be a once-overlooked hidden gem. People always call the first researcher mad, but few know what to call the second. And should that latter person achieve a miracle, they would find it all the harder to find a word with which to classify him and his team. Wow! Paimon barely recognizes the people in the reports! Are those really Jiria and Navia? 
They sound like real big shots. What do you think? Pretty enthralling, huh? The Steambird's idea was pretty simple. With the disaster just having passed, we would print a free edition packed to the margins with good news to calm people down. The value for these big scoops lies in their inevitable follow-ups. We'll publish further reports and go into the stories behind those people. Edwin's assistant, Jurier, created a true flying ship, while Navia is leading people in the reconstruction of their home. I'm sure that these stories could draw even your well-traveled eye. Hyman's curious too! Uh, wait a minute. Didn't we watch everything happen from start to finish? What's there to be curious about? And that's exactly why I'd like you to come conduct interviews with me. You're the best incubators of news, if you haven't noticed. And also, with you around, I'm sure I'll get to see that duke. Uh, are you sure? Hasn't he turned you down several times already? Oh, this time will be different. Come on, let's head to Poisson first, and then make a trip to the fortress. There are some things you'll only know when you get there. <laughs> Oh, it's you. What brings you all here? Hey, we're just having a look around. I'm here to update myself on how things are going here. Hmm? Oh, the Fatui are here too. Ah, uh, uh, let me introduce you. This is Mr. Garunt Snezhevich. He represented the Knave in sending us a large amount of supplies and is helping with our work. Our residents are hard at work as well. Thanks to everyone, work is progressing nicely. We've lost a lot of people, but we're moving forward. That will have to be enough. Hello, Miss Charlotte. I'm a big fan of yours. I especially like that article you wrote last year about Fontaine's stray cats. But if you don't mind, could you not emphasize our role too much in your report? It's not charity we're doing here. We just happen to share the same interests as Espina. I get where you're coming from. I'll keep it as simple as possible. Or would you be willing to feature as friendly neighbors? That would be fine. Thanks. Oh, you're back too. How are things? We finished laying down the construction materials. It'll be another hour before the workers are able to go over there. Huh? You're here too, Clarion? Well, her reputation's greatly risen after that whole duel business with Miss Farina. So she's here in Poisson to wait out the heat. Uh, all right, all right. She really came here to help me out. There's too much to consider in the reconstruction of Poisson. The Spina has need of more decision makers. And, well, I do already happen to be connected to Mr. Callus. Oh, wait just a moment. Do you mind me asking a few questions? You know, about how you felt before the duel, about what it was like facing down a god. There's lots of exciting material there, I bet. Uh, forget it. I'm sure you can find a better theme than that, Miss Charlotte. Ah, oh, I see you're the same as always. Couldn't you do me a favor, for Navia's sake? Well, if we're talking about doing things for my sake, you might as well just take a few more photos of me. Or of the Traveler. It's better than wasting time persuading Chlorand at any rate. Of course I will. I'm not gonna let her off that easy. All right, then everyone who wants to be in the photo, gather up! And smile! Was it a good shot? Did Paimon look cute in it? 
Not bad. Your addition really helped the composition of the picture. All right, hang on a moment. Let me snap a few more shots. All right, that should do it. I'll be back here later anyway, so uh, let's call it a day. <laughs> You're very quick. Speed is of the essence when it comes to the news, and freshness is the key. Also, not to brag, but I'm pretty good at building connections. Who knows? I might eventually get that interview with you after all, Miss Clarand. Wow, you really do have that never-say-die spirit. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'll hazard a guess that this is how you got that interview at the Fortress of Maripede. Whoa, you're well informed. Let me make a guess too. I asked Sijuin who told Monsieur Nervillette and he told you, right? That's a very complete information chain. In truth, all Monsieur Nervillette asked me was, when did the fortress become so friendly towards the media? I told him that it was best not to speak too soon. There's no guarantee that Ridesley will make a personal appearance. You're right. I've got to treasure every moment I have with them. In which case, I'll be making a move first. <sighs> Stay safe now. And tell me if you hear anything interesting. I'll treat you to afternoon tea in exchange. You seem curious about the fortress. Of course. Ugh, that Risley. I still remember going down to the fortress to grill him for information on my father's case. Boy, did he take me for a ride. Without telling me anything, of course. But he did invite you to tea, didn't he? Two large pots of it, in fact. It was good tea, though. I have to agree. The tea there is very good. Ah, speaking of that... Would you like to have some today? I mean, you've got time, right? Well, I'd be partial to some shortbread. Wow, <laughs> it's like we've got a menu or something. <laughs> sure, sure. Mm, good. What flavor of biscuits would you like, Mr. Snezhevich? Me? Uh, I'm fine with anything. But I would prefer chocolate, should you have it. All right, leave it to me. I'll go over the newly arrived supplies with you later, Mr. Snezhevich. We should be able to finish the preparatory work today. That works great for me. Huh. Is it just me, or did you get a new lipstick? Uh, I did. It was a gift from Sijuin. Want to give it a try? I think the color would suit you, too. to this place. Looks like you've been missing us. Duke! Did you come all the way to the entrance to greet us? Of course. I'm here to welcome you and our dear Miss Charlotte, whom our good head nurse recommended to me. It's an honor to finally meet the much-rumored Duke. Thank you for consenting to my visit to the fortress, sir. No need to thank me. But that said, I shouldn't be the focus of your interview. I trust you recall our agreement? Of course, of course. All right then, this way. Uh, uh. Uh. Hmm? Hey, no need to be so nervous. I've already taken all the photos we need. Um, Miss Charlotte, do these pictures really need to be published on the cover of the Steambird? It would seem that Miss Lorvine doesn't want her face to appear beside that of Mr. Jurier, hmm? Sir, please don't say things like that. 
<laughs> but it looks like dear Mr. Jurier denies it. Might this interview be very important to you then? No, I, I, I just... This is my first time being interviewed, and I'm very thankful to the Steambird for... <laughs> now, I might not look it, but I actually did meet Mr. Edwin once. And I'll be honest, I enjoyed chatting with you more. You've definitely got more of that genius vibe going on. The boat that brought about a miracle, the ark that saved the people. Why, you recreated a myth back there, like an emissary of legend. Still, if I might ask, where's that flying ship now? <laughs> Looks like Charlotte's trying to get herself another exclusive scoop. I have to apologize, but that ship is presently in the bowels of our factory. I'm afraid it won't be easy for you to get a shot of it. Really? Well, then in that case, could I have an interview with you to make up for that loss? You already know my answer, I'm afraid. Best you interview our head nurse instead. Or perhaps you'd like to take another photo of this couple of researchers? Did you really have to use the word couple? Well, then, two solo photos will do. Is my hair messed up? Please, someone help me have a look. Things sure are getting pretty lively here. <sighs> We've seen this kind of thing before. Oh, seems like everyone's here. Would any of you like to try this new drink I came up with? Ah, Sijuin. Uh, uh... Hey, Miss Charlotte. Why don't you, uh, take some pretty photos of our head nurse? Hmm? Uh, sure! Come on, Miss Sijuin! Over this way! Let's find a brighter spot! Huh? Oh, uh, sure! Uh, do I have to smile? So, how have things been at the Fortress? Same old, same old, as you can see. Fontaine's undergone some changes, but this place is still more or less the same. Other than that flying ship, I got a tad too much attention, I think. That's why I decided to let the interview go through. We should direct more public opinions toward the behind-the-scenes heroes. Am I right, Mr. Jerrier? Miss Lurveen? You're too kind, sir. I believe that you too should have your day in the sun. Not that you would want that, which is a pity. <laughs> I'll just leave the spotlight to you two. I see. Lots of things happened that day, huh? Anyway, regarding that Harbinger, I'm not sure you remember, but his three young followers are still waiting for his return. He sure did win them over, huh? I'll tell them that there's good news and bad news. The good being that their boss seems fine, and the bad being that they must face extended sentences for abetting his escape. Oh, actually, what about you? Are things gonna change for you too? <laughs> what change can there be? The Fortress will keep chugging along, and so will my duties. As to what Miss Farina's departure will mean for the nation, and if our laws and governance will be transformed, we'll leave those to the folks in the overworld. Hey everyone! The photo shoot's done! Good. In that case, let's call it a day here. Thanks for your cooperation. Come on, Traveler, let's go! Till next time, everyone! There'll be a next time? Maybe! Who knows? I might write a story about the underwater factory next time! Until then! All right, last stop, the docks. Oh, you know, I'd love to see you in one of Charlotte's photo shoots one day. Is that really necessary? Our line of work doesn't really require much photographing. It's precisely because we don't need the picture that they'll have value as keepsakes. You don't really look all that opposed to the idea, you know? Maybe I'm just happy that I managed to once again avoid the spotlight. I think this interview went well either way. Yes, you successfully kept prying eyes away by using Mr. Jurier and Miss Lorvina as shields. Very good. You should be happy for them. They have a bright future ahead of them. Here are the interview notes. 
They mentioned that the flying ship may have many uses in the future, and the journalist asked me what I thought of them. Seriously, how would I know anything about that? Flight is just flight. Whether people want to use a flying ship to broadcast good news or organize weddings is none of my beeswax. A wedding? <sighs> Why are you looking at me like that? So the flying ship can be used for weddings? I didn't say that. That journalist mentioned it, and what does that have to do with us anyway? True! What does that have to do with us? Here are the interview notes. Seriously, how would I- A wedding? Uh, uh, <sighs> why are you- So the flying ship can- I didn't say that. True! What does that have to do with us? mentioned that she stayed in touch with Linny and the others after working together. Apparently, they've been at the docks distributing these strange pockets the whole time since. Traveler, Paimon. Ah, oh, and Miss Charlotte, too. Would you like a magic pocket? What sort of gadget is it? It's a wondrous bag that can be used to carry many things. The water level has returned to normal, but if you see any of your things floating around, you can use this to carry them. Or you could trick a friend into doing it for you. Trick a friend? Hmm, I wonder which of my friends would fall for that. You could just make a friend like Fremenet here. Isn't that right, Fremenet? <sighs> Is this what you meant by, I'll help you make some more friends? To be honest, that sounds pretty sweet. Could I have your contact, please? Uh, oh, uh, sure. Uh, please, write down my address. You sure are working hard to help Fremenay socialize. He was the one who proposed doing this. He even wants to assist in our magic shows. Yes, I was planning to first introduce Pear as an assistant, and later Fremenay himself. In the future, I think we can leave underwater escape magic to him, too. That said, would anyone want to see a diver escape underwater? Oh, it'll work out. Every journey begins with the first step. He'll become a part of our show eventually. Uh, Lynette, could you come over? Miss Charlotte says she wants to take a picture of us. Got it. My, that Charlotte is rather perceptive. She got rid of everyone the moment she realized I had something to say to you. Hmm. So, how have things been, Traveler? Father says that you did a great deal during the latest events. She's very grateful for your contributions to Fontaine. Ah, uh, that's alright. We were more than happy to help. So, what's she doing now? Oh, I guess you haven't heard. Well... After Lady Farina left, Father and Monsieur Nervilet opened negotiations, during which he gave Fontaine's gnosis to her as a... diplomatic gift. A diplomatic gift? A gnosis? Yes, I was quite surprised at first myself. But when I thought it over, there were actually a number of things going for it. 
It could have been done as an apology for the incident with Lord Child, or as thanks for his help in tying the all-devouring Narwhal down. Furthermore, Father did also lend significant aid to Fontaine and Poisson. I would agree, but I've also heard that it seems that Monsieur Nervilet has had a significant change of heart regarding the matter. Uh, so there's some reason for this that only Nervilet knows about? I suspect you'll have to ask him about that yourself. Ah, uh, yes, speaking of which, I did see him strolling around the entrance to the Fortress of Meripede a while back. Uh, isn't he real busy and stuff? Paimon didn't think he'd have the time for that. But back to the topic. The Gnosis was given to the Knave, right? What about Child? They say that he's returned to Snezhnaya to recover from his wounds. I hear that the recent disaster really did a number on his health. That's true. When you think about it, we've had loads of run-ins with the Fatui. To think we'd be allied with them this time. So shocked by such a simple switching of sides? <laughs> Father! Well, well, what do you know? Come to the docks to see how my children are doing and meet the Traveler by chance. Please do not pay my accomplishments in Fontaine too much mind. I would have done them regardless. Are you going to... take the Gnosis back to Snezhnaya? That is our duty as Harbingers, yes. Don't be too preoccupied with sides. The goal of the Fatui concerns not a single place or person, but the entire world. With such a grand goal in mind, it is inevitable that we must wear many masks. Switching my masks is something I've always done. Well, that depends on many things. No one truly knows what the future holds. What good is honesty if you can't rely on it forever? As for you, I very much look forward to our next collaboration. Good things cannot be achieved alone, and you've proved yourselves to be great partners. A vision? <sighs> All right. I'll remember to return it. Thank you for keeping it safe for him this entire time. And that's a wrap for me. It, huh? You... you're... Greetings, Miss Journalist. Uh, um... Hello! If I'm not mistaken, there are diplomatic channels I'll need to report to to take a photo of you. That is correct. So forgive me, but I will not be able to serve as a subject in your article. However, feel free to write as much as you'd like about our dear magicians and our upcoming rookie talent. I... I will! The sea breeze is quite pleasant. Oh, I shall continue my walk while the weather remains so agreeable. Farewell. Farewell, Father. Oh, she has such an intimidating presence. I didn't even dare to take a picture. Thankfully, I've already wrapped up all my pre-scheduled interviews. Thank you all. This will be more than enough for me to write about, I'm sure. Don't be too nervous. Why don't you take a magic pocket before you go? Here, Traveler, Paimon, you take one too. To move things about? That's right. <laughs> Funny. I was giving out magic pockets when we first met too. And what do you know? I'm doing the exact same thing right now. So many things have happened, but the pockets are still the pockets. I guess this must be life. We will all follow our own paths, and serendipity will lead you to your fated friends. All right then, we'll be handing out pockets in some other districts later, so we'll get going now. Have a good day, you two. Well, guess we sent Charlotte off. Shall we go see what Nevelette's doing? As long as he's not so busy.
see that he doesn't have time to chat anyway. Really? Oh, I suppose you must have met Mr. Linney. He took the time to greet me earlier when he passed this way. In any case, you came at a good time. I was just considering reaching out to you to set up a meeting, so I may explain some things that I haven't had the time to before. Aw, Pyman's glad that you remembered! Thank you for keeping us on your mind, what with you being busy and all. Alright, let's have it then. How was Fontaine actually saved? This is still quite the mystery to us. Um, <laughs> it is strange how words can often leave a bitter taste in the mouth when it finally comes time to say them out loud. For me, the authority of the ancient dragons refers to absolute control over the Hydro Element. Fontanians were incomplete humans born of Egeria's use of the power of the Primordial Sea, with constitutions similar to that of Mimics. But so long as those primordial energies remain within them, I could use the ancient dragon's authority to grant them true blood after the fashion in which life was first brought into being on this planet. In other words, when I gave my verdict, Fontanians became true humans, and thus would naturally no longer be dissolved by water from the Primordial Sea. Fossilor must have counted on you to make that decision as well. Your verdict was the key to making the prophecy appear to have come true while saving everyone! Yeah! And in a manner of speaking, Fosalor finally managed to fulfill the original Hydro Archon's wish to turn Oceanids into real people too! <laughs> it seems from your expressions that you still have more things you wish to ask. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. I have investigated his case along many avenues, and I have learned that he once fell into an unknown chasm when he was young. There, by chance, he awakened the all-devouring Narwhal. But whether it be by sentiment or reason, that should not have been enough to consider him the root cause of the disaster, 
at most he would have had tangential liability. As for the judgment passed by the oratrice during the trial, whether it was due to that liability by association or Fosalor deliberately using him to buy time for us on the assumption that he would be able to hold the creature off, I cannot say. Guess Fosalor had Fontanians in mind the whole time! In the end, it was thanks to her that they finally became real humans! Uh, hang on a second. Paimon suddenly got another question. Back when Fontanians hadn't yet become real humans, were the children they had also transformed Oceanids? Life has always flowed like water. Do you recall how Fontanians would often come to the Fountain of Lucene to pray for children? Yeah! Lynette said the fountain is where all the waters in Fontaine converge! In truth, even those couples did not know that such prayers were no mere custom, but instead a form of ritual. Those Oceanids who were blessed within the spring water would later descend as new humans in the coming months. Uh, Paimon sort of gets it now. By the way, it seems like this ritual won't be of any further use, but it'll probably live on as a local custom. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Yeah, about that. Risley said Farina has already left. What's that all about? Ah, Lady Farina. The people are only aware that her death sentence has not been carried out. She abdicated the post of Hydro Archon and left affairs related to that title to me before leaving the Opera House. I related Fosalor's words to her faithfully and completely. After hearing them, she seemed neither saddened nor comforted. She simply said that she was tired and needed to rest. Having said that, she then packed her things and moved out of the Opera House, not unlike how an ordinary person might. Um, but she's still got a place to stay, right? You need not worry. I will make arrangements to ensure that she will not want for food, clothing, board, or travel. In truth, I am somewhat happy for her. The wear and tear on her spirit will, of course, take time to heal. But now that she no longer has to play the role of Fosalor the Hydro Archon, she can finally lay down her burdens and lead a normal life. What about you, then? What are your plans now that you've regained your full powers as the Hydro Dragon? After Fosalor passed on, the Oratrice also ceased to function. This matter will directly affect our trials. After much careful consideration, I've decided to take over its role in our courts. From now on, I shall hear cases and pass verdicts by myself. Looks like you're still considering stuff from the perspective of the Udex, huh? As an elemental dragon, there are indeed many things that I must do. But this power, and this duty, in a manner of speaking, you could say that both were granted to me. As such, before I attend to my other responsibilities, I must first and foremost continue to serve Fontaine as its highest judge. The duty of the Hydro Sovereign and the duty of the Udex shall coexist within my person. Additionally, the Hydro Archon's departure has brought about another problem, which is that the Opera House shall no longer produce Indemnidium. That's true. That power was derived from the people's faith in the Hydro Archon, wasn't it? Wait, but the various mechs and machines in the city are all still okay. Where are they getting their energy from? As I am now, I have full command over New Musia, and it can serve as a complete substitute. Another reason why I cannot quite leave Fontaine immediately. Wow. This ancient dragon's authority stuff is really quite useful, huh? Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Oh, that's right! They say you've given it to the knave as a diplomatic gift or something! Leaving aside their intentionality, the two Fatui Harbingers have indeed done much for us during this crisis. Their sole remaining goal in Fontaine, at least at this point, would seem to be the Gnosis. The Oratrice has ceased to function. The Hydro Archon's Divine Throne is now no more. And I do not need the Gnosis' power. As such, it has lost all meaning for Fontaine. If the Fatui have impure designs, then we might as well accede to their request now, and avoid unnecessary conflict. Ugh, what complicated considerations! Paimon thought you were just giving it to them out of gratitude to the knave and as an apology to child! Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. You will soon be heading to Natlan, I presume? I'm afraid that I have little talent as a travel guide, so all I can do is tell you what I know about that land. As far as I'm aware, 
Natlon can be said to be a nation of dragons. A nation of dragons? You mean like you? No, I suspect that I would not find myself welcome there. Unlike ancient dragons such as myself, the dragons of Natlon have undergone long years of development and evolution. Large numbers of them have entered a form of coexistence with humanity. Natlon is also the nation of war. War ravages those lands like an undying flame. There is one other piece of information I got incidentally from my negotiations with the Knave that I believe may be useful to you. The harbinger known as the Captain has thrown his hat into the endless ring of war. The Captain? Sounds like a real tough customer! Seriously, everywhere you look there's a Fatui Harbinger doing their thing! I suggest that you fully prepare yourself before going to Natlon. In the meantime, Fontaine's doors will always be open to you. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Uh, hang on a sec. Paimon's still got a question about the Gnosis. When we spoke to Linny earlier, he mentioned that your attitude towards giving away the Gnosis had clearly changed. We guessed that there might be some reason for it that only you were aware of. Hmm. No wonder the House of the Hearth is the Fatui's intelligence division. They are certainly sharp. So regarding this specific issue, I was just getting ready to share something with you. Uh, what is it? In truth, I exchanged some further words with that lady named Skirk after sending you two back to the surface. It went something like this. devouring narwhal isn't here so i'm no longer getting any interference i can finally catch the scent of your power what it's made of it is the authority of the planet's primordial dragons but with something very similar to a god's curse mixed in it's quite a novel blend i'm sure i've encountered something like this before what was it again? I do not know what you speak of. Ah, oh, of course. How could I forget? You should have the remains of the Third Descender on your person, yes? Remains? I've never heard of any such thing. Huh. According to your parlance, I believe it may be called a Gnosis. Well, that much is true. After Fosalor's divinity faded, she handed her Gnosis to me. But I fear I have never heard of it described in the manner that you just did. I've been training with my master, the Fowl, ever since I was young. And I have never returned to the surface since. So most of the information I possess, I got from him. It is only natural for those who are greater than humanity to possess a different sort of common sense. Which is why there are so many problems in our attempts to communicate with humans. Regardless, you should probably get rid of objects of misfortune to prevent any disasters from befalling you. To live in itself is a blessing. But once a person dies, the bonds he once had with this world shall all turn to curses. What do you mean by that? <sighs> no need to fret. These are just my... personal thoughts. And my reason for no longer wishing to return to the surface. This third descender you refer to, who are they? And when did they die? <laughs> Master never mentioned them to me. Perhaps it just wasn't that important for me to know. If you're interested though, I could ask him. 
I'll be sure to pass the answer on to you next time. Next time? You believe we will meet again? I do. Wait. I have a disciple of my own, don't I? He can be the messenger then. That's what she told me. Whether it would prove useful or not, I wanted to pass that information on to you. The remains of... the Third Descender? So that's what the Gnosis actually are. Paima just thought they looked like chess pieces! How could they be a person's remains? All the same, assuming that there was no misunderstanding or special metaphor at play, that is what she meant to say. And she said that it would bring misfortune and that you should check it, which is why you gave it to the Fatui! If she speaks the truth, then I would simply be putting Fontaine at unnecessary risk by keeping it here. I had guessed that you might already be familiar with this concept, but I did not expect you to be one of them. That means that the Gnosis, which are exceedingly element-compatible and can even enhance elemental abilities, do indeed come from the Third Descender. Hmm, I wonder. Does your body also possess similar properties? Like, uh... Like being able to use elemental powers without a vision! That does sort of count as special compatibility, right? No, no, let's not think about this stuff right now. It just feels... creepy. Comparing the Traveler to the dead Third Descender and all. That's what you say, but this topic still feels like bad luck! <sighs> Once Child recovers, let's get some more answers out of him. Or go look for his master and get the answers that way! I too believe it unwise to make too many blind guesses when information is lacking. The same is true of being at court. Alright. Whatever the case, it seems like the crisis here in Fontaine's over for now! Yes. All of Fossilor's efforts were for this moment as well. But... She sacrificed herself in the end as a god. And she suffered through all those years as a human! Was that really what she wanted? I suppose that would be the mystery of a god's will. I suspect not. But once in a while I too would guess that if wishes were like the clouds in the sky, they will one day return to the earth as raindrops. Life flows like water, and rain is the final answer. The water levels may sometimes tilt one way or another, but the rain falls fairly upon all. And what, ultimately, is the difference between the rains that fall upon all of us? It seems from your expressions that you still have more things you wish to ask. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. 